Hey, my name is Damian Lewis. I'm a mixing engineer based out of Los Angeles, California. And today we're going to talk about a super cool plugin from Waves called the Waves Studio Rec. And I created a preset called the DL808 Toolkit specifically for processing 808s. So let's dive into it and I'll show you what it's all about. So just a quick note before we get started, uh, since we are talking specifically about 808s here, it's going to be important that you listen to this on studio monitors or some good headphones so you can hear what we're talking about. So let's get started. I'm going to play you eight bars of this beat real quick. Uh, this is a beat produced by Rob Knox that I'm working on. I'm going to give you eight bars of it unprocessed, and then we're going to start talking about this 808 toolkit. Cool, so as you can see on our macros here, I have eight macros set up, saturation, EQ boost, compression, sub, attack, distortion, spread, and limiter. So uh, the easiest way to explain this is I'm gonna go ahead and play the beat and start turning some knobs. You might not see a whole lot of movement with the mouse because I have a Avid control surface. Uh, great thing about this plugin is the macros are automatically mapped to the encoders on the Avid S1. So it makes it super easy to tweak in something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and play back and start turning some knobs. You can get a feel for what's happening here. Then we'll take a look under the hood and I'll show you exactly what's happening with the process. All right, so that's the 808 in context with the track. I'm also going to play you one in solo just so you can really focus in on what we're doing here. So check this out. So on this particular 808, um, it already has a lot of distortion on it. So I think I like it with the distortion and the spreader off. So I'm going to go ahead and play this back with our changes that we made a couple times and just toggle the bypass on and off so you can hear the difference. Cool, so there you have it. Um, as you can tell, it, it was great sounding already, but we added a lot of saturation, we added a big amount of EQ boost, some punchy compression, a little subharmonic boost, and a lot of attack. And then our limiter at the end, just to bring up the level and make everything hit as hard as possible. Um, and we did pick up some gain along the way, because uh, sometimes louder is just better, and a lot of times we just kind of want to push it to the very edge. and. Um, all of the other processes, I did my best to gain compensate them. So you're not picking up a lot of gain along the way. But with the final limiter, I did want to kind of make something that was going to crunch up the sound a bit, add some limiting, and also give you some gain. So you can almost use it like a mix knob too uh, as you're mixing that into your track. So let me take a look at the inside of the rack here, and I can show you all the processes that are happening. And if you notice, as I turn my encoders back all the way off, there's a little blue light um, next to the center column where the plugins are loaded. And that's just simply saying that the plugin is turning on or off. So basically, my philosophy behind my presets is I wanted to start you with something very clean. So I'm not changing the sound drastically when you turn on um, this preset. So basically, when the preset comes on, everything is off, all the modules are off and you still hear your sound in its purest form, and then you can choose to add in whichever one of these processes you want individually. So we're not drastically changing 
the sound with the preset. Um, the way that I created this was it was always a vision of mine to create my own dedicated processor for 808s. Um, we use a lot of plugins processing 808s, a lot of complex chains. Sometimes you end up splitting them into several tracks and high pass and low pass filtering them, adding distortion, adding some sort of uh, stereo widening. And it's a lot of processing and it takes a lot of time. So my vision was I wanted one plugin that I could do all of that in a really, really simple way. Uh, lo and behold, Waves had just happened to come out with this at the exact same time. I had this big uh, diagram drawn out on all my modules and this, the specific signal flow of those modules into each other. And Waves, since they have such a huge amount of plugins in their arsenal, was the perfect company for this because they already made all of those individual modules. So when this came along, it was perfect. I got to put them all into a single plugin and control them all via macros. Um, and I'm really, really happy with the way it came out because I just uh, wanted to make something for myself, really. I wanted to make an 808 just killer processing plugin. And this allowed me to do that perfectly. Um, and we did all the hard work under the hood. We did all the parallel processing. We did all the multiband splits. Everything's in here mapped to eight sim simple macros. Um, so hopefully you find it useful. Um, it's going to be a really useful tool, whether you're an engineer and you're mixing a record and you're trying to get a great sounding 808, or you're a producer um, and you're trying to get that perfect sound on the way in, you know, because a lot of producers nowadays, they turn in tracks sounding amazing already. Their mixes are amazing. Their sounds are amazing. So this can be helpful whether you're an engineer or whether you're a producer. So let me go through each one of these modules and kind of show you what's going on here. Um, we'll go one by one. So our saturation is a parallel split. This column in the center is the dry signal. This column on the right is going to the Abbey Road Saturator. And this is based off a preset that I have in Abbey Road Saturator. If you go down to Artist, uh, called 808 Clarity. So this is based off of that. And you'll see as you turn this macro up, the small fader starts to blend in the saturated signal. Next in line, we have the EQ Boost. And here we're using a Pultec. You can see as we turn this module on, we have a couple things happening all at once. We have a low boost happening. And when it gets to a certain point, we're also starting to bring in a little bit of 3K with a very wide bandwidth. So my philosophy behind that is I want to add a lot of body, a lot of thickness to the 808, but also want to start to open up some of the clarity with the boost. You also see one more movement. You'll see the gain start to come down on the right-hand side. So we're adding a lot of EQ. Because of that, we end up adding a lot of gain, consequently. So I'm doing my best I can to gain compensate that so you're not just purely making things louder as we go along. And that is a direct feed. So from your first parallel split with your saturation, everything is going directly into your EQ P1A. Next up, we have the compressor, Arvox. And same kind of principle with this. Um, this is also a parallel split, so a column on the center side here is the dry signal and the processed on the right-hand side. And you'll see that as we turn up our compression here, we're also bringing down gain, because those of you that have used Arvox know that it adds quite a bit of gain as the compressor starts to kick in. So we're doing our best to compensate for some of that. Uh, one cool thing was because of all the Waves products, I actually got to take my time and use all of their processors and find what I felt was the very best processor for each application. Um, surprisingly, it was Arvox. And also when we talk about the limiters, we'll talk about why I chose the L2. Uh, so I literally went through every Waves compressor that they have and found the very best one for processing 808s, in my opinion, and ended up settling on Arvox here. It's punchy, it gets loud, it pulls down the peaks, it brings up the low-level stuff, um, saves you a little bit of automation in that regard. So that's our R-Box in parallel. Fourth in the chain is our subharmonic, and we're using Submarine for that. This is also based off a preset of mine called DL Sub Punch. You can kind of see my settings here. We're just using uh, the one low octave, minus one sub, a little bit of drive, a little bit of dynamic compression. And you'll see that as we move this macro, 
our wet is being blended into our dry here. Same as the others. These chains are not overly complex things, but they just work. I didn't want it to be fancy. I wanted you to turn a knob and for it to sound better in a simple, understandable way. So hopefully we achieve that. Fifth in line is Smack Attack. Um, this is a direct plug-in. There's no um, parallel split or anything like that happening here. And as we turn this one, we're just simply getting attack. This is all we want here. We just want it to get punchier. And I kind of tweaked it in the way that I like using the clipping algorithm um, and the longer attack duration, the furthest one on the right. So pretty simple there, pretty straightforward. Next, we have our first multiband split. So this is for our distortion. And we're using Berserk Distortion here. And you can see as we turn this one on, um, for each one of these plugins, I kind of had to take a little different philosophy, whether I was using the wet dry mix on the faders that you see here, or whether I was using it in the plugin, because they all kind of react a little differently. And I wanted to be very cognizant of phase relationships also. Some things just sounded better to me doing the mix here versus here. Um, and I really went through everything to make sure that it sounded better as you turned it and things did not sound funky because as we all know, plugins have different amounts of delay and sometimes they play nice with each other, especially when you start chaining a lot of things together and, and sometimes they don't work so well. So I did my best here to figure out the very best routing for all of these uh, modules. So uh, as you'll see here, the mix comes up in our Berserk distortion. And like I was saying, you might not always want every single one of these modules working all the time, but they're here for you. If you want to try them all real quickly and be like, no, nah, this one works, this one doesn't work, cool. Maybe you want them all, maybe you want none of them. Uh, something to note here is where we split this band. This is at 250 hertz. So what we're doing here is everything under 250 in the sub is being completely untouched. Everything above is being sent to our berserk distortion because typically that's the stuff we want to crunch up, right? A lot of times you'll end up splitting your 808 into two tracks, putting a high pass filter on it, and then putting your saturation, your distortion, and your spatula effects on that high pass filtered track and blending it back in. Um, but you got to be tricky with that. That causes a lot of phase issues. Um, depending on what kind of plugins you're using and how you're processing them and where your crossover points are at also. So I think we did a pretty good job at mitigating that and making it sound good. So same thing uh, in our seventh macro. This is our spatula plugin and we're using the PS22. And you'll see here as we turn the macro, just gets a little bit wider. And this is also at the same crossover point. So Again, everything below 250 is being completely untouched. Everything above that's coming out of the distortion is then being sent to our stereo widener here. And then finally, to cap it all off, we have the L2. Really straightforward here. This is just gonna make things louder, make everything hit harder. Um, this was a really fun one to actually go through all the limiters that Waves makes, because they make a ton of different limiters and really focus on the one that sounded best on the 808. And as long as I've been mixing, as long as I've been using Waves products, I've never actually sat down and like ABCD all of their products and say, okay, which one is very best for this? Normally it's like, okay, let me just throw this up. Sounds good, let's keep moving. So in this case, the L2 just sounded awesome on 808s. So let me show you a couple of quick modifications for this because hopefully right out of the box, this preset just works great and you like the way it sounds. But there's a chance since 808s are so different that you might need to tweak things a little bit. Um, I did my best in making it to use a lot of different 808 sounds all from records that I've worked on to make sure that the settings kind of work with everything. Um, but you might find yourself in a situation where you do have to tweak it a little bit. So with the Abbey Road, Really easy one here is just to, you can add gain if the effect is too subtle, if you wanna make it a little bit more pronounced, or you can switch your saturator from TG to red. And those are a couple of really simple ways to modify this one. Um, something you'll also notice is this plugin has a cool cumulative effect. So when you start to, you may turn the saturation and the EQ boost and not hear a whole lot, 
But then all of a sudden, once you start to get a little bit of all of these in, then it really starts to become pronounced. And then you can turn your saturation up or down. So the way that they interact with each other is really interesting. So I highly recommend just kind of turning them all, getting a sound going, and then going back and tweaking them. And if you have a control surface like this, man, it's great. It's so easy. It's so fast just to be able to turn a bunch of macros at once. Another good modification could be in the Smack Attack plugin. You can change the attack envelope here if you like. Um, I find this one works pretty well. You could change the clipping algorithm here to a limiter if you find it's getting a little too crunchy. Or if you need to tweak the sustain, of course you have full reign over that here. It's not mapped to anything right now. You can easily map all these macros. Or you can change the sustain by hand and kind of leave it at a set amount. A good modification when we get down to our distortion, and this is probably the most important one in the rack. Like I was saying before, uh, a lot of 808s come out sounding great and have a lot of nice distortion on them. So you may not go to this very often, but if you do, this is probably the number one spot to go to is the character. And you can just keep your distortion up and just scroll through these and it's going to really change the way it sounds really quick modification and just find the saturation and distortion that works perfectly for you here. And you can, of course, easily change the crossover point if you like. If you find 250 is a little bit too low, you need to bring it up a little bit just to catch that stuff up there, super easy to do. If you do that, I would recommend also doing that down at your stereo widener just to kind of keep them the same. So where you're distorting just the top end, also do that at your stereo widener. So I'm really excited about this plugin. I hope you guys love it. I wanted to make something that allows you to easily make great sounding 808s, have complex signal chains that would have been really difficult to do in the box with all the multi-band splits and all the parallel processing. Uh, something that's great for engineers, great for producers. Really excited about it. So hope you guys enjoy it. Have fun out there. See you.